Hi, and welcome to my video, how to make an introduction video for teachers. But seriously, why is this important? Well, let me tell you. Number one, it gives students the ability to see what your real life looks like because otherwise they just assume you live at school. But don't we? Number two, it allows us to seem a little bit more human, which kind of gives us an edge while we're teaching for them to think that we're not just soulless robots. I don't know about you. Number three, it's relatable for kids because it's the way they engage with their media and culture. It's where they learn when they're self-educating for good or for bad. As much as TikTok makes me want to barf on myself, there's really no changing it. And number four, this isn't really based on research from some journal I wrote. It's more of something I just thought about. Huh. Step one, plan and storyboard. So the first thing you're going to do is decide on the sequence, which includes an introduction to your class and your name, why you're a teacher, experience, some other life stuff, hobbies, a call to action, and lastly, a closing. Next, jot down some notes or sketch out some scenes. I made a little storyboard here because it's a little easier for me to think this way. Keep in mind, this does not have to be a beautiful piece of art. It's really just to get out your ideas. I only sketched out a few of the scenes, so feel free to do them all. Oh, hey, here's a little tip. Definitely allow your humor to shine through. So I forgot to write, write a script and I didn't spell script right. I knew it when I was looking at it. Any hoozles, it really helps a lot. One thing I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about was the call to action. So you can actually attach an assignment or some sort of participation activity with this. If your students are anything like mine, it's pretty much pulling teeth to get them to interact with anything I create, which is kind of gross. Maybe it's not the case for you elementary teachers because they still kind of love you. I kind of like the trust you'll leave a comment strategy because it parallels YouTube and it's something they interact with. You could also have them make their own video and upload it to share it to their peers or just you or YouTube or really wherever you wanted. You could also have them draw and notate their own lives kind of similarly to what I do in these videos. And lastly, you could have them draw a storyboard. I was going to try and draw a funny high school storyboard, but then I started thinking about it and decided I don't want to think about what high schoolers do outside of school. So we're going to take a little detour, sort of, from our steps. I just wanted to talk for a second about sequence and styles. I'm going based off of the video that I created, but there's a lot of freedom within this and you can organize it kind of whichever way that you want. I like to group the introduction, the why I teach, and experience in teaching into the same style. And I'll go over what that means in a second. As for the life stuff and hobbies, I usually like to include pictures and video. So this is my second style that I'm embedding. For the call to action and closing, I use the same style as the introduction. So what the heck are styles, you might ask? Well, they're a unique form of delivery. So the style of this video is me filming a sketched time lapse of my hands on paper and then doing a voiceover. Other types are writing out or drawing a sequence on a whiteboard and time lapsing that, then voicing over that, drawing out information on large cards and then drop them individually like they did in Love Actually, voice over that, or you do a stop motion video with Legos. The possibilities are really endless and I can make a video for each of those processes, but I'll probably make one later. If you're pretty app savvy, here's a couple of video editing apps I've used over the years, uh, mostly on my cell phone and edited the videos on my cell phone. So this slide was a little boring and didn't really have pictures, so I'm going to draw something fun in all this negative space. And finally, we have arrived to step two, where you gather your resources. So for step two, feel free to gather some photos, perhaps one of you from the year 2000, so the kids think you're like really old. Maybe a photo of you skydiving. I don't know why you would jump out of a perfectly safe plane, but you do you. 
Or you could really freak the kids out and show them a photo of your senior picture from 1989. Look at you and your bad 80s hair and your funny inspirational quote. You could also make some short videos from your tablet or your cell phone, drawing from your storyboard that you created earlier. And lastly, gather your remaining materials. Maybe it's time to bust out the old confetti cannon that you've been saving. Your janitors are going to hate you. Or you could grab a whiteboard, a tripod, some paper, maybe some of those cheesy borders they provide you with. The sky's the limit. Step three, record everything. So when I start step three, I record everything in sections. So the intro, I teach and experience, they're each one of three sections that I put into style one. Four is life stuff and hobbies. For my video, I did about, I don't know, four or five little videos for life stuff and hobbies in real life. So, um, and then five and six, the call to action and closing that goes back to style one. Everything that I do, I record in small chunks because I know I can add it to the video later. Oh, by the way, I'm a total cheater. I sketch out everything in advance in super light pencil to make sure I get it right. Then I trace it all over on camera. I do that because proper planning prevents piss poor performance and I can't actually draw and lay out like this at the top of my head. Here's a couple tips. Use a tripod whenever possible. It makes your life so much easier. I bought mine for 10 bucks on Amazon, even though Amazon's the devil. And sorry if you have to spend money, because I did. Next is creative recording. So you can use a variety of things such as time lapses, slow motion, regular video, and sometimes I edit regular video and speed it up or slow it down in app. Step four, editing. For step four, the first thing you want to do is figure out what app you're going to use if you haven't already. What I highly recommend doing is looking up a YouTube tutorial because there's a gazillion for any editing app you could ever want. After you're done with that, you can add videos and edit, export that app, but most importantly, share it with the humans. I really like to share what my district and school does because public school kind of gets a bad rap. Sorry to private school teachers, I'm kind of biased, but you could do the same for your school. All right, my dudes, I am done talking your ear off. P.S. I'm sorry for making more work for you to do.